I was thinking today that I need to make a more positive video about CR England and say some of the things that I love about CR England. So here goes. I love a lot of the instructors. They really do want you to succeed. I love 6ix9ine in Atlanta. He is the best backing instructor in the world. Now, what you see before you is a graph of my day to day. So you can see I was on my 14 hour clock. This is what my time is looking like every single day with CR England. So you can see that I have 35 minutes left of a 14 hour day, but I still have five hours and 45 minutes of drive time remaining, which means that I spent the majority of the day, probably seven hours and some minutes. And let's see, can I get that without messing this up very much? The truck just turned itself off. I'm in Minnesota and it's pretty cold. So I just put myself in the sleeper berth and you can see I've been in the sleeper berth now for four minutes. So out of a 14 hour day, I drove 185 miles, which means the rest of the day I have spent just waiting to be unloaded, waiting um, in parking lots, waiting for CR England to give me something to do, just waiting. And for me, this has been the typical day. And I found out that I am making 27 cents per mile. So when you add up my driving time and the amount of time that I just sit around waiting to be unloaded and that kind of thing, guys, you can't even consider that peanuts because if I was somewhere else making $10 an hour on a 14 hour day before taxes, that gross would be at least $140. Okay, well, let's take half of it out. So make that $135 um, because I have 34 minutes remaining. So what have I been doing tonight? You want to know. And this is what eats up a lot of my time just sitting around waiting. Literally yesterday, I went to a fuel stop past my designated fuel stop. I didn't think it would be that big a deal. So I'm driving on the interstate and I can't see this thing anywhere from the interstate. So I'm like, I'm gonna have to go really far to find this thing. So I decided I would just continue to drive until I find um, fuel that was in our network, which I did. I thought this was a really good idea. However, it was not. I literally was at that fuel stop for an hour and a half. I didn't think it would be that hard to get an out of network fuel well, it wasn't in my fuel stop, but it's in our network. I didn't think it would be that difficult to get the fuel. So I called, they said, you need to send, I think it's a macro 51. I did that, nobody responded. I kept on, nobody responded. So I'm calling back and forth and the lady was not very happy with me. And I realized I am the person who did this. So I just want to acknowledge that I am the person who passed the fuel stop. I just did not know that it was that big a deal. So that was an hour and a half that was just burned out of my driving day. Now tonight, I am going to show you some of the messages that I've been sending. So tonight, it is now over three hours later. I needed a trailer wash. I thought the trailer looked great, but when I took it to be loaded, they were like, oh, we need proof that you wash this. So I came down to the washer and you can see 
the last expense request I sent was at 6.22 p.m. And you can see the first that I sent, it was actually before 5.13. So you can see about how long that took. Now, I have literally been at this truck wash since then. They found a um, place that needed repair on the trailer. Didn't seem like that big a deal to me because, you know, I'm calling, I'm sending these um, macros and absolutely nothing. So I will have to stay here overnight until somebody can come in in the morning and approve that. But let me show you, I was literally on the phone with them for more than an hour and a half just waiting and holding. I talked to three different people. They put me back on hold and just left me there. I took a picture of it to just kind of show you this is the kind of thing that I go through at CR England. And um, what else was I going to tell you? Oh, I took a picture of, and I'm glad that I did. I took a picture during the phone call as proof, but after an hour and a half, the phone just disconnected or something somehow. I called back and it's like, okay, I'm just spending the entire night just trying to get this done. And this is the proof of those phone calls. So you can see that that is the screenshot. At this point, I am on the phone for one hour, 24 minutes and eight se seconds. And this is 9 27 p.m., more than four hours after I sent the initial request. Now, this is when it hung up. So you can see that I started that call at 8.03 um, p.m. And it hung up at 9.34 p.m. So I've literally spent the last four hours just trying to get this repair approved. The problem is the people, well, they have an account with CR England anyway, and they were like, okay, well, while you're on the phone waiting, we're going to repair the truck and then we can get the AP number that we need. Well, they finished with the truck long before I ever got anybody at CR England. So I pretty much burned my night trying to get someone to approve this, this truck repair. Actually, I'm sorry, it's a trailer repair. So now I am stuck here the entire night until tomorrow. And I'm going to hope that there is somebody who can approve this repair. So that's pretty much my experience with CR England. Believe me, I wish that this experience had been better. However, it has not been a better experience. Like I said, oh, there are some people at CR England that care, but believe me, there are very, very few people. I would never leave somebody on hold for an hour and a half at a shop looking stupid in front of all of the people who are waiting for this number. And eventually, the poor girl waited so long. Sorry, I took this picture so I could show you on my laptop. But eventually, the poor girl waited so long, it was time for her to go home. So she just left me here 